You know, if you're my age, a cell phone is used to call other people. But a lot of people are now taking uh, surveys on cell phones and young kids are signing up. They know how to do all this stuff and how to sign up on a cell phone. And it's fascinating some of the questions that come up. In other words, kids are comfortable reporting the days they drink alcohol. And usually, folks, that's Thursday to Sunday. I'm going to go back like 45 years of my life. Almost the weekend, why can't I have a beer? And then the weekend, I can have a couple beers. They're still doing it today. And here's the fascinating thing. On days when young people exercise more, Thursday to Sunday, they drink more alcohol too. They're rewarding themselves by working out when they drink alcohol. And by the way, this makes sense to me. I've always told you, the mold is penicillium. The poison it makes is called penicillin. The mold is brewer's yeast. The poison it makes is called alcohol. Why not work out? Why not detoxify? Why not sweat after you've drunk some alcohol? It just makes totally good sense to me. Young kids, you're doing everything right. What's fascinating is how honestly they report on their cell phone and maybe not so honest when they go into the doctor. Have you been drinking more alcohol? Mm, no. Let me see your cell phone. You have been drinking more alcohol. Here's what I would recommend if I were a doctor. Get rid of those mycotoxins, those poisons in your body after you drink alcohol. Young kids are doing it right. Begin doing this and you'll find you need less this. Welcome to Know the Cause. Look at that, the Fun Gazette. Uh, this is a segment where we bring up what's topical, stuff in the news right now. Uh, what are my teachers in elementary school? Current events. Current events. We talk about. Yeah, <laughs> Kyle is joining me and Kristen is joining me. Thank you both very much for coming in. Thank you, by the way, for all the clinical work that you guys did, working with doctors, patients, helping point them in the direction of good health through diet and supplementation. Mm. Easy, I mean, and, easy. And so what a jump off on this article. I pulled this so oh, two, three months ago. Patients must be part in their own health. Okay, you and I are saying, duh. But for years, folks, doctors have been saying, you can't say diagnosis, you can't say cure, you're not responsible for your own health, this is a pill deficiency that we're treating you for, and we're the bosses, right? You come see us when you're sick and we're gonna get you better. Now, the stats aren't good in medicine. And now, this headline. This week, we take a look at new recommendations by a task force on performance measures that suggest patients should share in the responsibility for their own health outcomes. Yeah, I agree with what you just said about the fact that our entire lives, at least since I've been born, it is the doctor's responsibility and you have nothing to do with it. Now, with them getting not very great results, well, you haven't been participating in your health. Of course, we're not gonna tell you how to eat, or if we do, it's gonna be one of those dietitian diets. I, I'm sorry, I'm so, I'm so low. Yeah. That's just me. I'm personally not a fan of a lot of the American dietetics uh, versions mm -hmm. of how to eat, but that's just me. But I think that they have so few tools other than here's this prescription, here's this radiation, here's this surgery. We're all thankful for when we need those things, but in general, mm -hmm. real health doesn't come at the hands of those and things. And Kyle, let's take that a step further with Kristen because dietitians say whole grains. Mm -hmm. And low fat. Low fat and whole grains. And what are headlines saying? Yeah, and so I found an article that says carbs are more harmful than saturated fats. <sighs> the villains, <laughs> you know, oh, fats. Yeah. Impossible. But I think that's true because they don't get it. It's not the carb, it's the grain that sat in a vat, right, called a silo, and is now impregnated with fungal poisons, which you're going to mix up with water and eat. And those fungal poisons off gas poisons called mycotoxins. And so it's not the carbohydrate. It's the grain. You know, it's not gluten, it's wheat. Okay? Yeah, so. And they do talk about that in the article, the good carbs and the bad carbs. We're not counting apple carbs or yeah, things yeah. like that. Broccoli. But it says, <laughs> right. it says we had people eat two times more saturated fat than they had been eating before yes. entering the study. And when uh, we measured the saturated fat in their blood, it went down in the majority of people. And the end of the study, the participant participants had lost about 22 pounds and experienced improvements in their blood pressure levels. By doubling insulin. their amount of saturated yes. fats, right? <laughs> yes. 
there that, you go. That is so counterintuitive for most people, Kristen. I think that, that people don't realize that you need some saturates. That's what one of our doctor yes, friends used yes, to call it. Yeah. You gotta have saturates, <laughs> Dr. Ingram. And, uh, but saturated fat is a lot of what your brain is made up of. You need a little saturated fat. Now we tend to think of saturated fat as some kind of fake shortening that you buy at a grocery right. store. Large. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the good guy saturated fats like the coconut oils and things like that. Olive oils, nuts, Palm oil. and things like yes. you cook with all the time. Mm -hmm. And by the way, thank you on behalf of so many of our viewers for taking what Kyle and I would have eaten out of a can for 40 years, you know. Yeah. It, it's, we have kind of spawned a lot of these diets, you know. The Mediterranean diet mm. is very much like we talk about the good oils and paleo. so forth, and the paleo diet is the protein, don't be afraid of protein and fat and so forth. Uh, but it all goes back, no matter what those diet proponents say, it all goes back, in my opinion, to starving fungus. Fungus is a living parasite inside the human body. Don't let it stay there. It needs to be starved. That's where you came in and Denny and started converting this can of <laughs> Vienna sausage, you know, that Kyle and I were more than happy to eat, into really good tasting foods, which you're going to make here yes. pretty soon. What is that? Some apple cinnamon amaranth is what we're okay. making. Okay. Yes. Okay. Th that's something <laughs> that you and I, whenever uh, John said, let's start doing uh, cooking segments, and Doug and I were like, Cooking. Why? Well, hey, you, Where you, you just cook? open up the can and you eat. <laughs> but it, it's so amazing how if you find a way to make this incredibly palatable and make it into a lifestyle and not be afraid to serve to friends, mm -hmm. and when guests come over, it changes the whole game, I think, for people. How about this headline? I don't want to go into this right now, but I used to work with Dr. Weekly's patients with herpes, uh, herpes zoster, shingles, etc. And I found that the antifungal program helped a lot of them. Hmm. So I wonder if virus is really virus or if it is mutant fungus. Do you guys remember when I brought you five years ago the bat, the white nose syndrome? The bats were all dying of a fungus they found in these caves. How about this headline? Bat soup banned as deadly Ebola virus spreads. In Africa, and I understand this, to eat, they kill bats and cook them and eat them. Are they eating bat virus? or are they eating bat fungus? And then are we calling that, look at that headline, this is so good, uh, are they calling that Ebola? Because we know today Ebola is a virus. Is it if they're eating fungal bats and they happen to get a viral infection? And then this one, Kyle, I wanted you and Kristen to comment on. Cholesterol lowering drug reverses memory defi deficit in mice. First of all, I'm not a proponent of cholesterol lowering drugs dislike them immensely. I think there are so many other ways to lower your cholesterol than let a doctor say, okay, here, and by the way, you're responsible. I'm gonna give you all the medicines you need. You're ah, that just tears me apart. The doctors are now saying, oh, the onus is on you to get well, not us. Mm. <laughs> Don't get me started. But what does that tell you? Um, I'm glad that you made that uh, state. I'm always afraid when Doug talks about statin dr or cholesterol-lowering drugs as being antifungal, I'm afraid people are gonna go, oh, I, I should actually take these. Thank you for saying that. I think the headline becomes antifungal drug uh, because causes- Because statin drugs are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now you have antifungal drug reverses memory deficits. So uh, all of the plaque, all of the buildup, if we can take care of the fungus so much of the time, the plaque goes away and the memory comes back. And that I think is the headline and that's the story. Are you ready for some amaranth goodies? Yes. All right. <laughs> I am so ready for that. Now, Kyle and I sat down a couple of months ago and talked about when diet isn't enough. If your doctor says you do have a fungal problem and there's more to diet, what do you do? Don't go away. We'll be back with more. You've heard Doug and I talk about a free sample of NSC Immunition MG Beta Glucan. Have you asked for yours? Just call and a free sample with free shipping is on the way. You see, when your immune response is working right, it's what you don't get that's important. Immunition Glucan doesn't make you pop, giggle, or fizz, but then hopefully you won't cough, wheeze, or sneeze either. Continuing U.S. medical school research proves how Immunition MG Glucan works. 
Tens of thousands of good people have received the free MG Glucan sample, then purchased NSC ammunition products. Can you risk not calling for a free ammunition sample shipped free? Help your body help you with higher quality NSC ammunition products with MG Glucan. Try it and know when you can. Beta Glue can. Hi, I'm Susie Cohen, author of The 24-Hour Pharmacist, and I only recommend Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. You see, most probiotic products contain billions of freeze-dried bacteria, but that can aggravate bloating and gas. Dr. O'Hara's provides only live, beneficial bacteria, plus their prebiotic nutrition. It supports noticeable digestive comfort. I believe in Dr. O'Hara's consistent results. It takes guts to feel great. Kyle, when is starving the fungus with diet not enough? Well, I think that you always have to ultimately kill the fungus. Mm -hmm. And by eating the phase one diet, that's what you're doing. You're going a long ways to first starving it. Plus, with all the vegetables and the good fruits that you're getting, you're getting a lot of those good antifungals mm -hmm. that will help kill the fungus, but sometimes you need a, a, a kick start. You've got the natural antifungals, you've got the prescription antifungals. Sometimes your doctor under certain circumstances will recommend a pharmaceutical antifungal, something like Diflucan, something like Nystatin, something like Lamisil, Sporinox, there's a whole host, Ketoconazole. Right. There's a lot of antifungals. You stay on them for a certain period of time, but ultimately, a lot of us would like to be able to go to the health food store, yep. pick up some naturals. There's a few that I brought. And believe me, there are hundreds, thousands of good antifungals. You taught me that a long time ago. That's mm -hmm. another story. But here's just a few of these. Uh, this is called monolaurin. This is from coconut oil. It is nothing but antifungal. It's powerful. It's from lauric acid. Wormwood, which is known as an antiparasitic, also fascinating how antifungal it is. I brought this in. This is just zinc. Old-fashioned zinc. Not that zinc is more antifungal than one other mineral, but it's just an example of all the common nutrients that we find in a health food store that are antifungal. Here's one, old-fashioned iodine. Yep. Uh, people taking this for the thyroid. And this one, the only reason I brought this, and you don't even need to key in on it, I'll lift it up and show it to you. It is just homemade. I just made this one. I got a bunch of good essential oils, and I put oregano, thyme, cinnamon, clove, thieves oil, that's a Young Living product, a lot of you know them, frankincense oil, also from Young mm -hmm. Living, and uh, medium chain triglyceride oil. This that's is the, the powerful, that's it's the got punch. the punch, right? Yeah. And it's powerful, you just take a, you got, have to smell this. Woo! Just inhaling that's it. Potent. I just cleaned out all the fungus in my nasal <laughs> you tract. Should. Wow. Okay, so folks, sometimes what I want you to know is diet is enough. A month or two on the phase one diet and you feel good. What about deep mycoses, where the fungus keeps thriving and thriving and thriving despite your diet? That's what Kyle's talking about. Sometimes your doctor will prescribe strong antifungals for that, but a lot of times the health food store and the diet have the answer. Thank you, you for Thank coming. you. Do you want to reduce muscle fatigue quickly? One supplement that could help is rhodiola. It's known to reduce ammonia and lactic acid from your blood, so it's perfect for muscle fatigue. As an added plus, rhodiola helps offset stress in your life, which comes in handy if you're dealing with a lot of emotional conflict and anxiety. The fiber in Nopal cactus that allows it to absorb water in a desert acts as a natural sponge in your stomach, absorbing water and giving you the feeling of fullness without side effects. Nopal absorbs sugar, keeping it from spiking in your blood. Nopal's insoluble fiber then works down the intestines, acting as a natural colon cleanser, absorbing wastes. Call Seagate at 1-888-505-GATE to order. Check out our internet specials at seagateproducts.com. Which of my books fit you? The first time I wrote this book, I called it, What Makes Bread Rise? Many people didn't get it. The same yeast that makes bread rise can make us rise. So is there a fungal link to weight problems in America? Read the fungus link to weight loss. The diets are there, the prescriptive, the natural antifungals. I think you'll enjoy it, and I think it'll cost you a lot of pounds. Oh, morning cereal. 
When you were younger, did your mom make oatmeal, malto meal, malto you know, cream meal. of wheat? Yes, right? cream of wheat. Oh, mm. I used to love those things. A little pat of butter, huge amount of brown sugar, Ooh. maybe some raisins. Okay, the reason we don't eat those things on the phase one diet is because grains like that are often contaminated with you know, fungal metabolites. However, seeds don't go through that siloing process and so forth. So amaranth being a seed, that's okay. And this to me smells I don't know if you guys. Yeah. Did you smell it? Mm -hmm. You made it. Yes. What I mean, okay. <laughs> it doesn't that smell like it maybe malto meal? That smells great. It does. Better I can't than wait malto to meal do that. that I had. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to mimic. I always used to eat cream of wheat, exactly yeah. like you said. <laughs> and so I crave that in the winter. I want something hot and warm and sugary and, and good, sweet. Right? And yes. will starve fungus. Yes, that will okay. starve fungus. <laughs> so the amaranth for me was the perfect um, substitute for that. Amaranth sometimes can have like a really earthy flavor, mm -hmm. and so all the cinnamon and spices and things really kind of mask that if people don't like that. Mm. Um, and it's a complete protein. It's got more calcium than dairy does, more absorbable I've type of calcium. I read that. I read wow. that. Yeah. Do you, so you put it, you boil some water like you, mom used yes. to do, and then everything changes. From there. Yes. Okay. Yes. You boil. That's the one similarity. <laughs> <Right>. Water. water. <laughs> Boiling water. You put the amaranth in a cup of amaranth. I use the kombu mm -hmm. um, that I always talk about. I use it in a lot of soups. You can grind it up or just put put it in and take it out at the end. Um, it's like adding a multi-mineral um, mm. to your real to your minerals. Zero. Real, real minerals. Yeah. Real yes. But does it? Everybody wants to ask when they see this. They ask, "How in the world is this?" It taste? really has no taste yeah. to it. Yeah, it's amazing. Okay, to yeah. me, you guys. Forgive me. Looks like a piece of bacon. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I put bacon in my cream of wheat. No problem there. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> and this is optional. You definitely don't have to use it. Right. Um, and then you've got your butter. Get a good quality butter and your coconut oil. I kind of yeah. do half and half because I love both. Mm. Um, and then a little xylitol. If you're sensitive to xylitol, you don't have to use xylitol at all. And I use the organic um, cow powdered stevia. You like cow, don't you? I do. Yeah. It doesn't have the, the maltodextrin as long as it is organic. Okay. So look for that. Uh, and then the cinnamon, which has lots of good antifungal properties that mm -hmm. we love. And your vanilla extract that adds a wonderful flavor. And then optional, if you want to um, dice up some apples, some green apples, or some walnuts, or pecans, or something like that. And you've got a great... Hey, breakfast. let's go back to cinnamon. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so fascinating, Kyle, to learn about herbs and spices when, always work with your doctor, tell your doctor this, but if you have diabetes, some of these things are so good at stabilizing blood sugar. And yet, once again, as we open the show, the doctor is going to say, take these medicines, but be responsible for your health. Teach your doctor about some of these things. But you can't patent cinnamon. Yeah, and so right. that's why, even though there's human studies done with this as being a great blood sugar management spice, mm -hmm. you're never able to talk about it like that because, well, it can't be patented and we can't turn it into a drug. And so that's why I love when food becomes our medicine. Aren't there doctors now who are getting it? I mean, there have to be doctors who graduated so. from medical school and that became their start date. And I'm sorry, Amaranth is sitting here waiting. I was going to say, <laughs> let's eat it. So um, I was going to say, you can mm. make up a big batch of this for the week and keep it in the refrigerator. It is good cold. You can heat it up in the mornings. Um, oh, as well, man. it's good for a snack or a dessert, <laughs> and you can play around with, you know, the nuts or, you know, the, mm. the fruit. And that this kind of is, God. your children <laughs> will absolutely <laughs> love this. I mean, this not only looks good, <laughs> this not only looks good, it tastes delicious. Kristen, once again, you take what people thought 40 years ago was my mundane diet, mm. and you've given it flavor and given it good nutrition. Thank you thank so you. much, and thank you for eating. Ruh, ruh, ruh. <laughs> Don't go away, we'll be back with more. So what are my top three tips for beautiful skin? Number one, cut out the sugar. Sugar helps or actually makes you get wrinkles and deteriorates your skin faster than anything else. You are what you eat, so putting in good fruits and vegetables, the phase one diet will give you beautiful skin. Coconut oil is my favorite go-to. I use it as my um, moisturizing lotion all over my body and my face. It actually has smaller molecules, so it penetrates deep into the skin 
and really helps to repair it, unlike most lotions and moisturizers just kind of sit on top of the skin. And water, you can't get any better than just lots of water. Lemon and water just helps to flush the body out. So coconut oil, stay away from the sugar, eat really good, healthy whole foods, the phase one diet, and water is the perfect for healthy skin. If you have knee pain, back pain, muscle pain, or any kind of pain, Flexin is here to help. But you don't have to take my word for it. Here's what this Flexin user has to say. Well, I recommend Flexin because it has worked so well for my wife and I, and we are able to continue our work uh, pain-free as a result of taking this product faithfully. You've seen Flexin on Know the Cause with Doug Kaufman. Now's your chance to take advantage of this great offer. It's buy one, get one free, but you have to call right now. Call 1-800-N-PAIN. Which of my books fits you? Can you cook your way to wellness? Can you eat your way to wellness? That's the name of a couple of books I've written, Cooking Your Way to Good Health or Eating Your Way to Good Health, loaded with recipes, whether you want to follow the phase one diet or the phase two diet. Please your families with good tasting foods, all put together in these two great recipe books. Well, I've never played obstetrician on TV, but here I am. John, my producer, handed me this. Next time we get Kristen and Brittany together, let's talk about pregnancy because both girls are pregnant. You knew probably Kristen had a baby a year ago. Emma Jane, ah, you just want to squeeze her. She is so cute, one year old. And you now have a four month old child. Uh, in five months, you'll have another child. Yes. And Brittany has Cove. What a beautiful name. Cove, a little girl, five months inside her, so in four months you'll have a child. Obstetricians, I want to know based on, you know, 30 some odd years ago when I had children, what do obstetricians say as far as exercise, diet, etc.? cetera? Um, my doctor told me to, you know, it, it just continue with your normal activities. If you were exercising before, continue to exercise. Don't try to change it up, just continue with how you were. Okay. And always, you know, try to eat clean. Right. Don't do the squats with 100 pound weights. No, and nothing so forth. too strenuous. Yeah, just stay out of that. Okay, and I'm so excited for you because Mark worked here in our studio and we just love you and Mark. <laughs> uh, and talented, talented couple. So I'm really excited. And I love that name, Cove. Thank Isn't that you. Pretty? So Isn't gorgeous. That pretty? You don't know yet if you have a girl or boy. Nope, we don't know. Uh, you'll know pretty <laughs> soon. But what did your doctor say? So, same as um, Brittany, we're, we're working with a midwife and um, so. She said to continue doing what we're normally doing. Um, since I'm having two babies so close together, she did say to, I'm in the gym lifting weights, which is fine, but I need to watch the certain types that I'm doing just to keep my pelvic floor very strong. Right. Um, you know, it's girl stuff. But <laughs> right, exactly, but, but it's okay because most of the viewers are yeah, girls, know. you know, so, so it makes it perfectly okay. I want to know about any mention, there was an excellent paper that came out a short time ago about a mycotoxin, I'm Doug Kaufman, uh, a mycotoxin inducing infertility, causing infertility. None of these studies come out on humans, right? They all come out on swine and on cows and horses. But here's what we know. When these horses and cows get into these poisonous fungi uh, that make these poisonous mycotoxins, they become infertile. So they can't reproduce, which is kind of interesting, and yet that doesn't seem to transcend over to the human field. You, for example, Kristen, for seven, eight years, this has been the, la the love of your mm -hmm. you know, life, uh, studying fungus, helping people with fungus, and even through infertility problems with it. Do doctors mention anything about that? No, I've worked with a lot of women that have, um, you know, been told they can't have children or they haven't been able to get pregnant and they've gotten on phase one and they have gotten pregnant. So, so. be careful. I do not want at my front doorstep all these little baskets, right? The, what I think infertility, you can kind of see it physiologically, the clamping down maybe on the uterus, the swelling and so forth. Uh, so the sperm, you know, can't uh, do what they're supposed to do or what they often do. Was Cove planned? Uh, she was. We we did try for five months before we were able to get pregnant. But um, when I turned 16, I was diagnosed with endometriosis. Okay. And my doctor, and and up until uh, now or recently, 
always told me, you're probably going to have a problem getting pregnant. You may not be able to get pregnant. So that was a very um, touchy thing when mm -hmm. we did start trying. I always had that in the back of my mm -hmm. mind, but I just prayed about it and, and you know, and it happened. And you, you probably thought at month four, okay, you know, it's you know, not going to happen. Yeah. What does that do to your heart as a woman, newly married woman, um, that, you know, wants a family? Are you thinking at that point, okay, maybe that's not the plan for me? Are you thinking adoption? Well, each month it just, you kind of got like, we got a little bit more down about it. Like, oh, mm -hmm. man, yeah, yeah. you know, it's really true. And, yeah. um, but I was determined. Yeah. I mean, I just knew, yeah. I knew it would happen. And so, um, you mentioned a birthing center. Did you not go to a hospital for the child? We didn't, but you know, I think it's everyone, every woman just knows in their spirit whether they should be going to a hospital or where they feel more comfortable. Wherever a woman feels more comfortable is where they're going to have the best birth. Mm. Because when you're calm, 90% of a, a birth is your mind and mm -hmm. your calmness and your positiveness. So I think mm -hmm. that's really important for women to remember is just to stay positive. Um, and wherever you feel more comfortable is where it's going to be You know, best. Chris, our director, well, Beth has decided for birthing centers also. Are there doctors associated with the birthing center? Sure. There, Are you doing yeah, that My also? doctor is actually uh, associated. She has a birthing center. Wow. She um, has a whole staff of midwives. Uh, my doctor, I found, she's right in between. She's, whatever you want to do, we'll do. I and love um, these women. And so I, I was really lucky with finding her. And so, I mean, it really just comes down to whatever you want to do, hospital or birthing center, I'm there for both. So. You know, this boils down to the opening of the show where I got a little angry about doctors saying, you know, you're on your own, kids, but in fact, letting you choose like that is a great, great thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you both for coming and sharing this information. And the take-home message here is fungus can cause infertility. Think about that. No fungal problems here. Thank you. <laughs>